Hello, startup listeners. It's Alex Bloomberg. I'm coming to you not with a new startup episode, but as we sometimes do here in the startup feed, I am introducing you to the latest show that we are launching here at Gimlet. That show, Sampler. Now, I mentioned the show before, and you actually met the host, Brittany Luce, on a previous episode of Startup. The idea of the show is that Brittany and her team listen to tons and tons of podcasts and handpick the best moments and bring them to you. There's just so much out there. There's so many great moments that are happening in this world of podcasting. There's so many podcasts to listen to. How can you listen to them all? Brittany does it for you. It's a clip show, but it's so much more. She also does interviews with podcasters. There's so many crazy people in the world of podcasting. She finds them. She talks to them. They say fascinating things to her. So without further ado, I bring you the very first episode of the very latest Gimlet offering, Sampler. Take it away, Brittany. From Gimlet Media, this is Sampler. I'm Brittany Luce, a.k.a. the Sacagawea of the podcast world, a.k.a. your host. And just as Sacagawea bravely led the Lewis and Clark expedition through the Pacific Northwest, I'm here to help you navigate the fast and deep world of internet audio programming. This show exists basically because everyone here at Gimlet Media loves podcasts, including me. And in fact, I have one of my own, obviously, outside of the show you're listening to right now. It's called For Colored Nerds. On this show, Sampler, we will share all the moments we love from podcasts we know and podcasts we've just discovered. I'll be your host every week, and sometimes I'll have a special guest. Today, I'm joined by my colleague here at Gimlet, producer Chris Neary. Hey, Chris. Welcome to the show. Hey, Brittany. Chris, before we get started... We should warn them. We definitely should. So, as far as Gimlet shows go, this show is going to blow every other show out of the water in the profanity department. So, if you have kids nearby, you may want to hit pause or put on some earbuds. I want to start today with a show that I really love. It's a comedy podcast called Bodega Boys, and it's hosted by Jesus Nice and the Kid Miro. You may have seen them around. They have a show on MTV, too, and loads of Twitter followers. But I first got into them because of this web series they used to do, where it was just the two of them shooting the shit behind a bunch of bodega crates. To explain why I love them so much, I guess you should know that before I worked at Gimlet, because this is a very recent development in my life, uh, I used to have this corporate job where for one day every month I did everyone's personal expenses uh, for like eight or nine hours at a time. On expense day, I would just like save every single episode that I possibly could of Jesus versus Miro. And then I would just sit and like keep like a tiny window open in the corner of my screen where I felt like my boss couldn't see through my shoulder. And then I would sit there and just like fill out Excel and just choke on my own laughter. Just at the ridiculous things that they would say. This story says a lot about the desperation that comes with corporate jobs. <laughs> um, so listening to Jesus and Miro made me feel like I was just like drinking and talking shit at a friend's house in the middle of the day in like my pajamas or like a full sweatsuit. And when the web series ended, I was heartbroken. But then I heard they were back with a podcast. So today I'm going to play this clip from a recent episode which gives you a real sense of uh, the topics that Jesus and Miro can cover. It starts with them complaining about the changes to Twitter. Yes. No, nobody likes that because Twitter is our playground. We created Twitter. We made Twitter what it is. Yo, they fucked up Twitter so bad when they made it. And I don't know if it's just me because I use Twitter for iPhone. Yeah. Where you can't just respond to a tweet. Yeah, it does that weird retweet thing, man. I hate that shit, man. Nobody likes that. Why why can't we edit tweets, man? 2015, dog. I can order a pizza with emoji. I can't edit a tweet. That's not cool, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going on. I I feel like it's Obama. (laughs) <laughs> I don't want to blame him, but I feel, you know, a lot of shit has gone downhill Listen. since Obama came into office. Would you vote for Ben Carson if he was like, yo, I'll change that shit back to a star? Mm. Right? Maybe, maybe. I would. I would. I would cast my vote. But see, now, he would say, he would be, he would say it in some kind of way where he was like, I'll do it because you uneducated Negro enjoy that. <laughs> like, he made me feel bad about enjoying it, so I couldn't do it. Because everything Ben Carson says has this whole lingering essence of, I have routinely dipped my fingertips and brains. Dog. And you have it. Did you see the vine of him being like, speaking of energy, 
when I was 14, I stabbed a fellow. Yeah, he's <laughs> and then he just starts laughing. What the fuck? Who he's a weirdo. Guy, he said he stabbed someone when he was 14, and because the guy had a big belt buckle. Yeah. The, you know, the blade broke or something. Come Yo, on, Bear dog. Bear Cross, he got a lot of shaky stories, Yeah, this man. is not an episode of Thundercats, guys. He got a lot a fucking sword doesn't ricochet off a belt buckle you like that. I don't yeah, know like, what you're what talking is, about. You, this is the first sword you got in Legend of Zelda, the you one made saying? of wood. Ding! Like, no, come on. Nah, nah, nah. And none of his stories can be verified. Come on. So we can verify you being a brain surgeon, yeah. but we can't verify when you got robbed at come the, on. the chicken establishment and when you stabbed somebody. Huh? What happened? Where's the person you stabbed? Come on, dog. Wouldn't that person come out like, yeah, Ben Carson tried to stab me? Nah, man. If if Ben Carson stabbed you, you wouldn't pop up as soon as he started running for president. Like, yo, don't vote for him. Yeah, no, that's true, yeah. So, like, the thing about Ben Carson <laughs> is that, like, to people my age, like, I'm 28, and, like, I think Jesus and Mira are, like, around the same age I am. They're, like, in their early 30s. To my entire generation of young black people, Ben Carson was like the biggest deal ever. Ben Carson was at a level where like you could see him, maybe not literally, but you know, figuratively. You could see him on one of those murals at 125th Street where like you have Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks flying in the sky above Harlem. There's Ben Carson with his scrubs on, his latex gloves, going to do brain surgery on a child. Look at what's possible, Brittany. Exactly. 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 <laughs> that was that's like that's like who Ben Carson was to me. Ben Carson also happened to look almost exactly like Marvin Gaye. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? That's completely unfair. Right. So he was on the cover of this book that he wrote himself, his autobiography, looking like Marvin Gaye. I think if I'm not mistaken, as I used to think he was really cute too. I think it was like the seventies or eighties, so it was totally acceptable for you to have a little bit of chest hair poking out of your scrubs. Sure. Oh yeah. Maybe a gold chain. He had like yeah. a like a polite Lead tiny afro. Yeah. He was the shit. And all of a sudden he started sharing his political opinions with everybody. And we were all just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever want to be a brain surgeon? I wanted to be an oncologist when I was a kid, when I was Close. like nine. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I really thought that I was. You were like shooting kids. high, but not that high. Yeah. Like I was, you, you, you were I like, was, I think I'm oncology material, not brain surgery yeah. material. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. But yeah, no, that's why I, I love that. I love that piece of tape so much because it's just like, there's humor, but there's also like the anger and disappointment of just like, Ben Carson. Right. Yeah. What happened to you? We wanted more. We wanted more. <laughs> or less. Or less. Less of some stuff, more of others. Yes, stuff. more brains. <laughs> more more dipping your fingertips in brains. Right. Less talking. <laughs> Period. Uh, <laughs> so obviously, Jesus and Mira can talk about a range of topics. But one of my favorite parts of their podcast is when they dispense relationship advice. Their advice almost unsurprisingly, is both very true, possibly even profound, but also uh, terrible and offensive and, as my mother would say, raunchy. So it made me wonder. I'm hosting this podcast where I'm recommending podcasts to other people. But, you know, would everyone, you know, would, would lots of other people find Bodega Boys as hilarious as I do? So I decided to test this question out by playing a clip for the very very last person that I could ever imagine being in Jesus and Miro's target demographic. How old are you? Really? You don't have to answer. I'm a happy, healthy, and sexy 60. How about that? That's beautiful. I'm very happy to hear that. I'm very happy to hear that. Chris, please meet my mother, Ursula. You and Dad have been married for how many years now? Do you know? Mm, long time, forever. 36 years. 36 years. And when did you get married? Uh, 36 years ago. <laughs> so I picked out a clip for us to listen to together. It's an old favorite of mine from last fall. My mom was in her kitchen in Farmington Hills, Michigan, and I was in the studio here in Brooklyn. Do we press on three or do we on say... On three. We press on three. We're on, on three. One, get ready, get I'm ready. set. Okay, I'm getting ready. Just Wait, get am set. I going to count or are you going to count? I'm going to count. Okay. All right. Let's just count. One. Uh huh. Two. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three. I'm on. Who amongst us has not sauntered into a default relationship? You're oh, yeah. kicking it with a girl. Yeah. It's cool. Y'all fucking every now and then. Yeah. You know Next what I'm saying? You know she got There's a draw. There's no names. Yep. There's no, she got a draw. Yep. But you're like, you know, I don't want the draw, mm -hmm. but she does need her robe there. Yeah. She does need her little comb. Little she needs a little wrap. Little extra for panties. Extra panties. Uh, maybe some deodorant. You know what I'm saying? In case you want to leave from your house you know I mean? to her job. A toothbrush. Like, oh, a tooth. But then what happens? Then one day, you know, you're in the kitchen and she's like, yo, mm -hmm. happy four months. Ah! 
what? And you're like, what? You're like, what? 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 And she just goes about her business. And you're like, okay, that's cool. I'll deal with that. Uh, uh, I'll break up with her at the end of the week. Nah, you and you do don't because the church is fire or no. whatever, whatever. And then, you know, one day she's like, come to this thing at my job. Oh. And you're like, all right, cool. I'm with it, ma. And then, and then she's like, yo, what? this is my boyfriend. <laughs> And, it and then dropped. it's solidified when people come up to you. Oh my God, I heard so, oh, much, so much about, about you. you. How long have you been together? Oh my God. And people come How up many to you years? and they know dates that you don't know. They'll be like, so you guys have been together for six months now. And you're wow. like, what the fuck are you talking oh. about? Look at these apple picking pit. Like, oh, wow. We, took, we went apple picking? You go to her apple? desk and you're her background. Oh, oh, it's lit. Shout out to Accidental Relationship <laughs> Awareness Month. <laughs> so now you're like, what, eight, nine months in? Yeah. And you're like, yo, she's getting your dangerous. family know her. Your family don't really dangerous. rock with her. But, you know, she's there. You be here. She be there. You know what I mean? Y'all be there together. together. You know what I mean? Listen. Sh- sharing Netflix and shit. A lot of y'all are cringing as you're listening to this because you're in the exact situation. Exactly. And some of you ladies are rolling your eyes because you put some guy in the situation. <laughs> okay? If your boyfriend has only called you his girlfriend three times in eight months. And let me tell you something. A lot of dudes just probably try to avoid this. You know what I'm saying? A lot of dudes want to be in relationships, but a lot of dudes do not. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, a, and most guys who do not want to be in a relationship would try to avoid this. But right. dudes are fucking stupid. And yeah. it's like putting a peanut butter in a cage. You're going to catch a raccoon. You know what I'm saying? That's I like exactly, that. you know, like it's that. exactly how that is. Against your better judgment, you're just like, yo. Yo, it's yeah. cold. Her yeah. apartment's warm. She got that project. Yo, she, heat. Yes. She got the Netflix. She got HBO you know Go. She got a car. She got a car. She always got juices in her fridge. All types of juices, Yo, man. All the tropical and weird tropical shit. Listen. It's like 5% juice. Shout out to you ladies wearing dudes down. It's like, yo. Yo. I know. Yo, I, I got you. Tell your she girlfriend, keeps like, making yo. Fucking I, got, I got two weeks left. <laughs> I got two. He gonna help. Listen. Some of y'all listening to this and y'all yeah. laughing and y'all don't even realize Thanksgiving is what? A month away? Yes. Y'all gonna have to have a, yes. a very difficult discussion yep. Cause your girl's gonna be like So Soon are we come. going to my parents house uh-huh. or, or yours your And you're gonna be like What? Oh, what do you I thought you made plans what? on your own Oh, oh. <laughs> then, then, then it gets very awkward And you know what I'm saying Not that I'm speaking from experience Yeah listen Me either <laughs> Only have relationships over here <laughs> yeah. My relationships are like Red Bull They give me wings <laughs> It's funny <laughs> Okay, I'm serious. I'm going to keep a straight face. <laughs> no, you don't have to keep a straight face. It's okay that you thought it was funny. What do you think about relationships like this? I think it's unfortunate for the female that she jumped right in, especially within a four-month window. Four-month window. You think four months is too soon? Yeah. Really? Just kicking it. I'm just kicking it. I don't think that's long you, enough. What do you mean? Just Wait, hold on. Do you think just kicking it is like dating, or do you think that those are two different things? In my day, you know, you set up early and you kind of kicked it around and then finally got to a point. He says, I really, I really like this person and I want to kind of spend more time with this, this particular person. So then let's, let's enter into some kind of agreement that, yeah, we kind of want to see, yeah, I want to spend more time with you. Yes, you want to spend more time with me. Okay, we'll do that. Versus like, I saw you at a party, you were cute, we went home together. And then, you know, every other week on the Friday, or, you know, you, you get a, I, what do you call it? Guys call it now, booty calls. Yeah, booty calls. <laughs> booty calls. A booty call is not a relationship. Right. Okay. Some people take that booty call as real attention, and he really wants to be with me to the point of he comes over in the middle of the night just to be with me. He can't sleep in his bed because he's thinking about me. <laughs> and that's really a booty call, and she's thinking it's romance. So what's it like to hear your mom say the words booty call? <laughs> um, it's like, it's weird because on one hand, now that I've like listened to the clip with her, on uh-huh. one hand, it is like, it was a little much. Sure. Um, but on the other hand, I am weirdly, I'm like weirdly not surprised. Uh, would you say impressed? I'm impressed. I am impressed. But now that I also like, now that I actually like, I've like heard now both of us on tape. I actually think that I get a lot of my manner of speaking from my mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another question. Would you say you're becoming your mother? I think the transition is complete. <laughs> I think it's been so for right, I mean, at least a decade. Right. I mean, you guys like the same podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> Natural indicator of good parenting, I think. Sure. All right. So I think it's time for Sampler's inaugural ad break. And coming up after the break, two of life's greatest mysteries, actually, I think. Uh, Death and sleep. This 
This debut episode of Sampler is brought to you by Squarespace, the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store. This is my first ad ever on this first episode of Sampler, but I actually have this other podcast. It's called For Colored Nerds. We use Squarespace to make our For Colored Nerds website, and it's beautiful. But the name of our podcast, For Colored Nerds, it makes some people feel a little weird, which I find completely hilarious. When I'm explaining to someone for the first time what the podcast is about, it usually goes like this. You host a podcast. What's it called? Uh, For Colored Nerds. It's called what? For Colored Nerds. Um, what's it about? Oh, it's about, you know, news and pop culture and also race. (laughs) And then usually what happens is that I just leave that completely hanging and then I take the person's phone and subscribe them to the podcast. It's for colorednerds.com. Thanks to Squarespace. Start your free trial site today at squarespace.com. And when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code SAMPLER to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, build it beautiful. This debut episode of Sampler is brought to you by Audible.com. Audible.com provides over 180,000 audio programs from the leading audiobook publishers. Audible.com is offering our listeners a free 30-day trial membership. And can I please recommend one audiobook I personally believe that everyone needs to hear? It's called Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes. When it was first suggested to me that I write about this year, my first instinct was to say, no. Writing about myself feels a lot like I have just decided to stand up on a table in a very proper restaurant, raise my dress, and show everyone that I'm not wearing panties. That is to say, it feels shocking. It puts bits of me that I usually keep to myself on display. Naughty bits. Secret bits. Full disclosure, I am currently making my way through Year of Yes for the sixth time. (laughs) <laughs> but you can get it now at audible.com slash sampler. Show your support for Sampler and get a free 30-day trial at audible.com slash sampler. Hi, I'm Brittany Luce, and welcome back to Sampler, the show where I tell you what you should be listening to, um, because I can. And also, welcome back to my co-host for the day, Gimlet producer, Chris Neary. Hey, Hey. Uh, the clip I have here right now is from one of my favorite podcasts called The Dead Authors Podcast. Mm. It's a provocative name. And the premise <laughs> is very simple. British author H.G. Wells, who wrote the science fiction book The Time Machine, that's important, and who died in 1946, uses a time machine to bring back other dead authors from the past and have conversations with them in front of live audiences. <laughs> Did you know this whole time? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> The H.G. Wells wrote the time machine. I thought he just wrote The Invisible Man. So I was just like, oh, random <laughs> choice, H.G. Wells, just whatever. The whole time we've been working on this episode. I had no I had no clue. So now it's even better. Yeah, no, now this is deep. This is very deep. I'm right. with you. I'm 100% with you. This is shocking to me, surprising, okay. but okay, I'm ready. Wow. I'm so glad we captured that on tape, <laughs> that, that realization. Okay, so comedian Paula Tompkins plays H.G. Wells. And the authors who he brings back are also played by comedians. Uh, there are episodes about F. Scott Fitzgerald and L. Ron Hubbard and Walt Whitman. But my favorite episode, my very favorite episode of this, is where Christian Shaw plays Tennessee Williams. For anyone who doesn't have Tennessee Williams' accomplishments at the top of mind, which is fine, that's totally fine. Um, he was a mid-century American playwright who wrote The Glass Menagerie, Streetcar Named Desire, and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. So here's the clip that opens that episode. You're hearing comedian Kristen Shaw walk out on stage, being introduced on, Mr. Williams. as Tennessee Mr. Williams. Williams. Thank you very much, Tennessee. Please do have a seat there. Let me get this microphone out of the way. There we go. You having a having a bit of a bit of water there in the in the tumbler? No, no. This is a little bit of a tonic, and <laughs> the rest is magic. <laughs> <laughs> so just the classic magic and tonic. It is the oldest drink. <laughs> In New Orleans, that's what they serve up at 10 a.m. with your biscuits and your gravy and your magic and your tonic. <laughs> it is. So it's sort of, it's sort of a breakfast drink. Yes. And then does it does it continue throughout the day? Yes. 
if the day proves to be less than uh, magical. It seems like a very, a very simple solution yes. to a non-magical day. Why not drink some magic? Yes, indeed, H.G. Well, we... <laughs> I think what makes this podcast so great is that it takes an outlandish premise, one dead author talking to another dead author in front of a live audience, and actually makes it work. And when you're listening to it, you might think that Kristen Shaw is really hamming it up or overdoing it to get laughs. But not that long ago, I was listening to a podcast that's called Desert Island Discs, Uh and I heard an interview with the real Tennessee Williams. Oh, And it was sort of just like Dead Authors Podcast where you had like a very proper English person (laughs) interviewing Tennessee Williams. And the fun part is that, you know, you hear Christian Shaw uh, impersonating him on the podcast, but she actually got pretty close (laughs) to what he sounds like. Like he does have a super distinctive voice. So here's just a little snippet of that interview. Why plays? Had had you seen a lot of theater as a youngster? Uh, no, I hadn't seen. There wasn't much theater in St. Louis. Uh, the first time I saw a play that deeply, deeply moved me was uh, Ghosts, Ibsen's Ghost. It uh, moved me to the extent that it moved me right out of my seat, and I, I just couldn't sit still. I had to pace up and down the back aisle. <laughs> that is, like, shockingly close. I know. Surprising, right? <laughs> Okay, okay, so now back to the fake Tennessee Williams on the Dead Authors podcast. This is from the very end of the show where H.G. Wells is taking questions sent out on Twitter, which he calls the social networking platform Twitter. Uh, Evan Rabelais uh, asks, are you happy with the way Marlon Brando portrayed Stanley Kowalski? Yes, I am, because like I said before, Marlon Brando's got a face. (laughs) That could not only launch a thousand ships, but it could also turn them around, come back, and launch them again. They'd be like, did I just see that handsome face? Why are we going away from it? We gotta go back. I think I did. Oh, we did see it. Do we gotta leave, Marla? Do we really gotta go away from that face? Tennessee Williams, thank you so much for being here. Tennessee Williams, Okay, Brittany, we have one more podcast today. It is not like the other ones we've heard that were, we hope, funny and energetic. <laughs> it is intentionally boring. Intentionally boring is something that I have been on 25% of my first dates, Chris. Wow, that's a pretty exact number. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know. You gotta have you gotta have stats, but um, yeah, no. I mean, you know, if it's uh, if it's not going well, then I will uh, just try to steer it toward a halt. One time, I think I got down to forty six minutes. Forty six minutes from sitting down to paint. Forty six minutes. You are a killer. Last fifteen there. minutes, I got driven home. I mean, I probably wasted only an hour and fifteen minutes of my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why would we present a podcast that is intentionally boring? It's because unlike most podcasts, this podcast is medicinal. Like it actually helps with your life. The podcast is called Sleep With Me. And here's the show description. Can't fall asleep? Mind racing at night? Worries keeping you awake? We are here to help. Sleep With Me is a groundbreaking podcast that uses boredom superpowers to help you fall asleep. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, start your sleep engines because I'm about to wave the... uh, a non-checkered, f- the, the fuzzy flag of sleep, because it's, it's, I said time twice, bummer, but it is time for sleep with me. Three times cancels it out. So the conceit of the show is that the host, who calls himself Dearest Scooter, tells you bedtime stories that are, by design, really boring. He tells weird personal stories, and sometimes he even slips into other languages. And he even does really, really boring recaps of television shows, like Breaking Bad. The next scene, we have Walt getting ready for his treatment, and uh, he's talking to Junior in Seattle. He's all doped up, totally wrecked. Like he's so, uh, he just gets his, you know, some straight narcotics, and he can't even get his glasses off. Seattle says, "Hey, where's your cell phone?" And he says, "Which one of the two? Which one of two? He says. And Seattle's pissed. Uh, un mes después, uh, I think. 
And then we have Walt and uh, Doc and Walt's got to go to all of a sudden. It's uh, months later. Well, un mes después, a month later. Uh, it's my Spanish is getting better there. I noticed it. And they're talking results, going back to work. We called Dear Scooter to find out more about the inspiration behind this strange podcast. Turns out his real name is Drew Ackerman. He's a librarian. He lives in the Bay Area. And the name Dear Scooter comes from Scooter Libby, the former Bush administration official. That is a long story. The important thing to know, though, is that Drew has trouble sleeping and has since he was a kid. Like, I felt like these adults wanted to help me, but I felt like it was like almost like we were speaking a different language. And I feel like that's the same way for, for people that can't sleep. Even now, it's like a lot of times it's like, well, what do you mean you can't sleep? Have you tried? Oh, well, I was thinking too much. Okay, well, have you tried not thinking? And it's like, of course I've fucking tried not thinking, man. Like, what the fuck? Like, no, I can't sleep. Like, oh, have you tried baths? Have you taken a hot bath? It's like, I mean, it's very isolating to be lying there alone in the dark, either as a kid or as an adult. It feels like in doing this podcast, you've you've developed this very specific writing skill set that I do not understand. What are the writing rules of putting someone to sleep? I think one element of it is always that there can't be a lot of repetition. If there's anything that I hear a lot of, it, it's that, you know, white noise works for a certain population all the time, but for other people it gets repetitive or I was even or they even know when the, the white noise loops. And so, you know, I guess one key I feel like of putting people to sleep through my podcast is that whenever they listen, there might be familiar elements, but there's always going to be something different going on. But at the same time, it can't be something uh, they can really sink their teeth into or overly interesting. It's kind of like finding a balance between what's interesting to like you and your waking life or would be like gripping and what's totally boring that you just would totally tune out like a lot of times at least with me there's like a lot of narratives that are going on that are just droning repetitive voices about this thing or that thing or about your self-worth or your life or your relationships or just all the work you have to get done and so really the podcast has to be more interesting than those voices, but not be so interesting that you're like, oh, I can't fall asleep. I, I have to hear how this turns out. In short, when you were trying to put people to sleep, you break every rule of good storytelling. The sort of rules we, <laughs> we, we aspire to follow here at Gimlet. Like, for example, the stories are intentionally long, too long, because if you made them too short, people would feel like, well, I'm, I have to fall asleep in the next 30 minutes. He wants people to know that he'll be there for an hour, droning on, and so they don't have to worry. And speaking of that drone, another thing you pay attention to if you're deliberately trying to put people to sleep? Delivery. People talk about when someone's boring, they say like, oh, he was just droning on and on. But you are literally droning on and on, and like, but for, for a good purpose. I think it's weird, but I like found the voice of the podcast through doing the podcast. Like, I mean, I guess in my head, I really picture like this proper English gentleman with some nice pressed slacks and a tea and he's coming over and he's sitting down in a nice comfy chair. He's got the patches on his jacket, uh, <laughs> elbows. This is the character you imagine would have the voice that you use in the podcast. It's like if your weird neighbor was a proper English gentleman who drank tea and ate biscuits, <laughs> but didn't leave the biscuits were crumbless biscuits. And, you know, he, he let your dog out right before he left and, and then locked up, shut out all the lights. I mean, it just, just like the moment you were doing it, you were talking there, like it felt a little bit like the show. Yeah, I'm just a weird guy sitting next to your bed chattering on and on so you can fall asleep. <laughs> so, Chris, have you actually use this podcast to fall asleep? I have. I have. So the first time I used it, it did not work at all because I was listening to it like a Gimlet employee looking for like cuts of tape <laughs> yeah. that I could show people. But the second time I used it, I was able to kind of drift away with what he was saying. Although it was not great to wake up with the earbud in my ear. <laughs> so Brittany, mm -hmm. now that you know about this podcast, we've yeah. been talking about it for uh -huh. a while. Have you used it? Okay, so... I, I, <laughs> That's the pause. If someone gives you when the answer is no, but go so, on. So 
I almost used it this morning. Almost. Uh-huh. I have been in this thing for the past like week or so where I, you know, just casually wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> you know, because we had the launch of this show sure, coming out, sure. right? I so, you know, it. yeah. And I was like scrolling through my phone and I was like, maybe I should listen to Sleep With Me. Yeah. Next time you should pull the trigger. I know. Yeah. I really should. Yeah. I really should. Yep. So this has been the very first episode of Sampler. Thank you guys so much for listening. I appreciate it. The entire Sampler team appreciates it. On the show today, you heard clips from the Bodega Boys, the Dead Authors podcast, Desert Island Discs, and Sleep With Me podcast. You can find links to these shows on our website, gimletmedia.com slash sampler. This episode of Sampler was produced by Chris Neary, Matthew Nelson, Rose Reed, and myself. It was edited by Alex Bloomberg, Peter Clowney, and Caitlin Kenny. And this episode was mixed by David Herman. Our theme song was written and performed by Micah Vellian. Original scoring was done by Peter Kakoma. And our ad music is by Build Buildings. And special thanks to Ursula Luce, that's my mom, and also Emily Kennedy. And listeners, we want to hear from you. Send us one podcast you would share with your mom and tell us why you play it for her. You can message us on Facebook or Twitter at Sampler Show or email us at sampler at gimletmedia.com. Sampler is a production of Gimlet Media. Thanks to our sponsor, Audible.com. Audible.com provides over 180,000 audio programs from the leading audiobook publishers. If you want to listen to it, Audible has it. Go to audible.com slash sampler to get a free 30-day trial today. That's audible.com slash sampler. Thanks to our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store. Squarespace features easy-to-use templates and 24-7 support. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code SAMPLER to get 10% off your first purchase and to show your support for our show. Squarespace, build it beautiful. Tune in next week to hear comedian W. Kamau Bell, who loves Denzel Washington so much that he created an entire podcast about him. I want to know, why Denzel? I mean, that's a weird question. I guess it's like, why focus on the sun? <laughs> is that it yeah we're done we're done we're done that's so cr- i can't believe that first episode in the can done everyone's going home i shouldn't smack the table so there you go that was sampler hosted by Brittany loose i hope you enjoyed it as much as i do if you did by all means Go and subscribe. What are you waiting for? Go to wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to Sampler. As for the startup podcast, we are furiously working on season three. That is going to be coming to you in the spring. Be sure to check this feed for updates as we get closer to that time. All right. Thanks, everyone.